Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to set up build root on your Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now, for those of you who don't know what build root is, it's basically an embedded operating system for basically Raspberry Pi and devices like this, where it actually takes one job and does it really well but that's all about it. You really can't do much more than that. It's not made for a desktop. It's not made for multitasking, but technically you could do it. So build root in itself is an operating system that basically requires you to compile everything for anything to work. So for example, when you first compile it, you basically get an operating system, but there's nothing in it other than bash. If you want to do open SSH or even get Wi-Fi working, you would have to compile that program for build root to use it. For an example, I actually have this eight inch monitor on my desk where I actually read my show notes from or bullet points or even some code that when you see me coding, I reference it on that screen. I'm currently using Raspberry Pi Lite and it takes upwards of 45 to a minute just to boot up into reading a text file that is on the drive itself. So in this situation, it is actually ideal to run build root because all I needed is to boot up and show me my notes. And here's an example of a fresh boot of build root. As you can see from the rainbow screen itself all the way to where the login prompt is, it takes only about five seconds, which is basically the amount of time that I just told you about it. So let's jump into it. Now, BuildRoot is actually a pretty easy operating system to get up and running. Uh, it gets harder as you need to configure more and more stuff into it. Again, you have to compile everything. So to grab it first, we would have to do git clone, git, and then git.buildroot.net slash buildroot. This will actually grab the repository and in there, we can actually compile everything we want. Now I am using this on a Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 3 that I have actually has a broken USB port. So I can't even plug in a keyboard and mouse into it. But that doesn't matter the fact that all it does is actually just read something and puts it on the screen. So now I'm gonna change over to the build root directory. And in here, you just have all these make files and stuff like that. Now, what I'm gonna do now is actually go over to the board directory and I'm gonna list it and you could see that there's actually a bunch of other boards that I could use other than Raspberry Pi 0, 2, 3, 4, uh, and all these other boards. So you could actually compile it for Orange Pi if you wanted to, and it's the same method. Now, I change back to a root directory of the build root, and I'm gonna type in make Raspberry Pi 3-64-default config, or def config. My mistake, I forgot to put the word pi right in here. It is underscore and it's supposed to be pi. All right, there we have it. It's gonna pull the con default configs for the Raspberry Pi 64 bit. If you didn't want 64 bit, you could just remove the 64 and it'll just be the 32 bit version. Now in here, if I hit make dash J8, it'll actually compile the entire operating system into a little image file that you could install onto your SD card. But what I wanna do is actually put some functions into it. So I'm gonna do make menu config which will open up a prompt that allows me to install packages now. So if you wanna get Wi-Fi working, which in my case I would because this doesn't, this, the USB ports and the ethernet ports don't work, um, you would have to actually install other stuff like WPA um, and wireless tools and stuff like that. Now somebody did make a website on a really good guide on how to get this going. And basically I just followed his instructions and it worked right off the bat. And he also explains each why you need every single one. Like if you need a package for a passphrase or uh, NL80211. And even if you follow his guide, you could actually turn it into a wireless access point if you wanted to. So I'll leave a link down in the description for his website. And basically this is how you would get wireless working. For me, I'm just gonna install OpenSSH because that's something we need to connect to the device for. So I'm gonna head down to target package, hit enter. And then in here, I am actually gonna go look for network applications and kind of just scroll down to open SSH. So right over here. Now, if I hit enter on this, oh, I mean space to select it, you could actually install client server and the key utilities, which you need all three, or technically the server and the key utilities if you don't wanna have SSH client. But I'm gonna install all three just to get open SSH working. And again, remember I was talking about wireless tools. These were the things that you would need to install. Now to get out of this, I would hit tab. So it highlights the exit and then hit enter to exit that. And then do that again and exit again. And now it's gonna say that you got new configuration. Do you wanna save? Hit yes and you're good. Now from here, I would just do make 
8-J8. I am using a Ryzen 7 1st Gen 1700 and I have 8 cores, 16 threads. Even on this machine, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to compile. It depends on the computer you're using and how long it's going to take. Also, once you've done compiling the first time because it has to compile all the kernels and everything, the next time you want to add applications to it, it won't take as long because a lot of the stuff is already pre-compiled. So if you want to add wireless tools into in the future or add some other application in the future, uh, yeah, it won't take as long as the first time making it. Once everything is done and it's done compiling, all you have to do is open up your Raspberry Pi imager. And in here, you could go to choose operating system, use custom. And if you go over to your build root directory, there should be a folder called output. In output, you would want to go into images and there's your SD card image. In our case, it's only 159 megabytes. So you could use a four gig SD card or even smaller and this will fit right into it. So select that and grab the SD card that you're going to install this on. So in my case, I'm just going to slap it on the card that I was using, which is a 16 gigabyte card and write. Hit yes. It's going to be really fast because it's so small. Once you're done writing everything to the card, now all it is is to boot up on your Raspberry Pi 3. And you can see in my boot up process literally only takes five seconds to get the login prompt. So I currently have it hooked up to my Pi KVM. And as you can see, with the Wi-Fi working, it actually takes about 23 seconds to get the DHCP. So if I wanted to reduce that time, technically I could modify it and not request for DHCP when I boot up and actually just boot into the prompt, grab my text file that I need for my teleprompt and then run the wireless DHCP later. So you could play around with that in this type of operating system. All right, one thing I did want to show you is if I go into free-m, you could see that it's only using 29 megabytes out of the one gig on my Raspberry Pi 3. And if I was to show you the hard drive space that it's actually using, it's only using 74 megabytes out of 112, which is almost like nothing. I didn't even expand the hard drive on this and I still have 28 megabytes left, which currently I don't really need to because all I am reading is a text file. So I might just leave it like this. Now, there are a lot of operating systems that actually use this build root and Motion iOS is an example. You know, a video that I made a couple of weeks ago about making security cameras using your Raspberry Pi. That whole operating system actually built on top of this. So it could actually get from really simple to what I'm doing to really complex. So if you guys really enjoyed this type of thing and want to play around with it, here you go. I, I hope you have fun with it. But just doing something simple like this and getting to boot under five seconds for my Raspberry Pi is amazing. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.